We begin by praising Allah Azza wa and for thanking Him for who He is and for what He gives. And we commence by sending some praise and salutations upon the greatest human being to ever walk the face of this earth, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so I want to start my khutbah today by asking a, a question and wanting us to reflect on this a little bit, inshaAllah. And that is the concept and the definition of what does it mean to be rich? What is richness? And so if you ask many people, they'll say, you know, it's in the number of houses or mansions they have, or in the businesses, or, you know, they're basically everything that they are in their answer will be how much wealth they have accumulated. It'll usually be physical, tangible things that they can acquire. That is what you will, most people will answer. And so, what better, or who better to learn and to ask than the greatest human being to ever walk the face of this, this earth, the Prophet where he teaches us, لَيْسَ الْغِنَى عَنْ كَثْرَةُ الْعَرْضِ وَلَكِنَّ الْغِنَى غِنَى النَّفْسِ And uh, this was reported by Abu Dharara radiallahu And so the Prophet he said, richness does not lie in the abundance of worldly goods, but richness is in the richness of the soul, the richness of the heart, right? And so naturally as Muslims, and you know, the companions, they were always wanting to learn more from the Prophet sallallahu And so, so now naturally the, the following question becomes, how do we get that richness of the soul? How do we, how do we, how do we become rich with, uh, within, our, within our hearts? And so this is where, again, uh, we, we learn that the Prophet sallallahu another hadith, um, uh, and this is where Allah Azza wa Jalla says, uh, and this is in uh, Hadith Qudsi. And, when, and what, what does Hadith Qudsi mean? It means it's a statement of Allah Azza wa Jalla. So Allah Azza wa Jalla Himself is telling us it's not from the Quran, but it's a statement of Allah, where He says, "Yabna Adam tafarrad li'ibadati amla sadrak sadrak dinan wa asud fatrak wa illa tafal malat yadika shublan wa lam asud fatrak." And so Abu Hurairah radhiyallahu anhu reported. That the Prophet وسلم, he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ibn Adam, O son of Adam, be free for, for my worship, and I will fill your heart with riches and alleviate your poverty. So what is Allah Azza wa Jalla saying? He's saying, busy yourself with my worship. Busy yourself with the worship of Allah, and you will fill your heart with riches and alleviate your poverty. And then he says, and then Allah Azza wa Jalla continues, he says, and this is where we, we need to be worried for ourselves because he says, Allah Azza wa Jalla is saying, if you do not do so, I will fill your hands with problems and never alleviate your poverty. And so subhanAllah, if we look sometimes, you know, in our society today, people, their pockets will be full, but yet you will find whatever you ask them, how are you doing, but they'll start, you know, telling you all the problems that they have. And yet, you know, subhanAllah, and, and I see this a lot when I travel overseas, Sometimes you may be thinking, SubhanAllah, how is this person surviving? He may be a taxi driver, but you see him as being the happiest person you know, that you've met in a long time. And so that's because Allah Azza wa has given that person richness in his heart. And yet, that is something that you know, money can't necessarily buy that. doesn't matter if you have millions of dollars in your bank account. That's something that Allah Azza wa He instills within a person's, within a person's soul. And so, you know, when we say, so how do I busy myself with the worship of Allah? It means that I prioritize Allah. I prioritize whatever it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants of me and the rights that Allah Azza wa has upon me. 
And so sometimes, you know, when you ask, you know, brother, why don't I see you in the masjid? Or brother, you know, let's go to this class in the, in, you know, in, in the masjid. Or you are basically inviting someone to do good. But yet they'll say, brother, I don't have time. I don't have time. I have to do this. I have to do that. I have to do that. And so you find that however, that same person, if you ask him to do something with regards to what, for example, it could be a sporting event, or it could be anything that he, you will find people making the time to do things if they truly value it, right? If you truly value something, you will make time to do that said thing. And so Allah said, he's saying, make the time. Because that time that you put in there will be a source of barakah for you. When you go to the masjid, maybe you will find that Allah eases whatever difficulty that you're, whatever difficulty it is that you're going through. And so you find, unfortunately, that many a time, you'll find people having no time for anything akhirah related, and all the time for things dunya related. And that is exactly the opposite of what Allah Azza wa Jalla is telling us. Right? Allah Azza wa Jalla is telling us, prioritize me, and I will take care of all your problems. I will, and I will not just give you what you want in this world, I will also fill your heart with that richness. Again, that is what we all are truly chasing at the end of the day. Right? We're all chasing that eternal success, which is a Jannah, which we ask Allah Azza wa Jalla to grant us all that. And then on top of that, we want to have a relatively comfortable life here. And that Allah Azza wa Jalla, He is telling us, He will give it to us if we prioritize Allah Azza wa Jalla. And so again, going back to the concept of prioritizing Allah, it doesn't necessarily mean a person is spending, you know, 24 hours a day in the masjid. No, whatever it is that we do in life, whether I'm, I go to school or I go to work or whatever I do, if I do it with the right niyyah, it can be a source of barakah, it can be a source of reward for us. For example, if I go to work so that I can take care of my children, so that I can take care of my family, so that I can provide, so that I can give sadaqah, so that I can do, you have all of these intentions to do good, then that is you prioritizing Allah. Because you're thinking, what is, Allah has blessed me with this job. Allah has blessed me to go to this college. Allah has blessed me. How can I now use that blessing to earn, to in turn earn the pleasure of Allah and to make Allah happy. And that is how we, again, prove to Allah Azza wa Jalla that we are prioritizing Allah. And so again, um, this this concept of using the niyyah is, is incredibly valuable for us as Muslims because that means that every single action that we take, anything that we do can be a source of reward for us. And that, that is, and so much so that a person can be living his whole life and his whole life he is getting reward from Allah because he has the right need, he has the right intention in whatever it is that he or she is doing. And ultimately, what did Allah Azza wa Jalla, He says in Surah Al-Jinn, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Allah Azza wa Jalla, He says He created mankind and jinn to worship Him. Right? So again, every single thing that we do in life can be a source of us worshiping Allah with that proper intention. And so what does Allah Azza wa He say? If we prioritize and if we uh, obey the commandments of Allah, what does He tell us? What is the reward for us? Allah Azza wa He tells us that He will fill your heart. He will fill your heart with richness. And when your heart is rich, my brothers and sisters, you are content with whatever situation that Allah places you in. You will find that, you know, sometimes you will find a person being tested. And, you know, we look across the, the, the globe and we see our brothers and sisters in Gaza, you know, they're being tortured daily and they're being, you know, persecuted and they're being oppressed. We ask Allah to make it easy for them and to liberate them. Allah, I mean. Yet, when you watch the videos or when you see, you know, clips or when, when you hear or when you see the things happening to them, what is their response? You find them saying beautiful words, beautiful things like, Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakeel. Right? Allah, uh, and, and, and they are praising Allah even though they are in the most dire of circumstances, dire of situations. And they don't say anything that is displeasing to Allah. Because they know that they have truly understood this concept. They know that whatever it is that Allah tests them, tests them with, Allah Azza wa Jalla is going to one day replace it with something much, much better for them. Right? Because what does Allah say? You need Allah who bikum al yusr. What are you need to bikum al yusr? Right? Allah Azza wa Jalla wants to make our lives easy for us. And how do we and how do we how do we do that is by again obeying the commandments of Allah Azza wa Jalla. 
And so again, Allah Azza He says, He will give us that contentment. He will give us that richness in the heart. Which again, as I said at the beginning of the khutbah, money cannot buy that. Right? Doesn't matter if you have, if you're a billionaire or if you're a millionaire or if you're the president or if you're whoever you are. If you don't have that richness in your heart, then you will always your life will your your life will be filled with problems. Right? And you'll always be you'll you'll always be focusing on the negative things, and you'll always you won't have that contentment that someone who who does not have as much as you. Uh, might have. And so Allah Azza wa Jalla, He continues, He says, He will fill your life with this, right? All of us are chasing that to a certain extent, right? We all want that disk from Allah. We all we all want, you know, the nice things in our life. And Allah Azza wa Jalla, He says that He will fill our lives with that disk. And Allah Azza wa Jalla, He continues, He says, مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ حَرْثَ الْآخِرَةِ نَزِدَّهُ فِي حَرْثِ وَمَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ حَرْثَ الدُّنْيَا نُؤْتِهِ مِنْهَا وَمَا لَهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ نَصِيرٍ that Allah Azza wa Jalla, He says, whoever desires the harvest of the hereafter, we will increase for him in his harvest. And whoever desires the harvest of this world, we will give him thereof, but there's not for him anything in the hereafter. And so let me let me break this down a little bit more. Allah Azza wa Jalla, He says that if you desire and if you're looking towards the akhirah, you're looking beyond just the here and now, you're focusing on what will happen after I leave this earth? You're focusing on salah, you're focusing on siyam, you're focusing on sadaqah, you're focusing on those things that are pleasing to Allah. And that is how we prove to Allah that we desire the hereafter. Then Allah Azza wa Jalla, He says, not only will He give us what we want in this world, which is what we're all, we're all looking for, right? We want, we want to have a good life here, but Allah Azza wa Jalla, He says, you will have that everlasting contentment, and we will give you, Allah Azza wa Jalla, He says, we will give you in the hereafter. Allah Azza wa Jalla will increase your reward in the year after. And so, however, on the flip side, for someone who's constantly, his main concern is the dunya. And let me give a quick example here. I know uh, many of us might be uh, following sports here. And so I know that the Cricket World Cup is going on, the basketball finals are going on. And so what does it mean? An example of someone who is prioritizing the dunya can be someone who is watching the game, and the Salah time for say Maghrib comes in, and you know, Salah time for Aisha comes in, he hasn't prayed a single Salah. That is someone who is prioritizing the dunya over prioritizing Allah Azza wa Jal. And so, Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, whoever prioritizes the dunya, Allah Azza wa Jal will give him some from it, some from the dunya, and there will be nothing waiting for him on the day of Qiyam. We ask Allah to protect us from that. And so, to, to summarize this part of the, this portion of the khutbah, when the dunya becomes your concern, brothers and sisters, you might have three jobs and millions of dollars, but you won't have any time and contentment for anything. And so we ask, we ask Allah to make us from among the people who prioritize the akhirah, so that we can succeed both in this dunya and in the akhirah. Allahumma ja'alna min ahli al-akhirah. Allahumma ja'alna min ahli al-akhirah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah al-azim li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-muslimin fa astaghfirullah al-azim. الحمد لله رب العالمين وأبدي صلاة الله ثم سلامه على أسعد خلق الله أجمعين نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحابته أجمعين وارض اللهم عن الخلفاء الراشدين المهديين ببكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن سائر أصحابه أجمعين أما بعد. So many of you might already know that we are entering we are upon the best ten days of the year. And so there's a reason why I wanted to start my khutbah with highlighting the importance of prioritizing the akhirah and prioritizing the rights of Allah Azza wa Jalla that He has over us before mentioning these best 10 days. Why? Because if a person doesn't, if a Muslim doesn't recognize that, or if a Muslim doesn't prioritize the hereafter, then it doesn't matter if it's the last 10 nights of Ramadan, first 10 days of the Hijjah, the Sha'ban, Ramadan, he will be the same within these 10 days, and you'll be the same without. So firstly, it was an advice to implore, firstly myself, and then my brothers and sisters here to prioritize the Akhirah, because that is what will truly give us that success um, on the day of Qiyam. When on that day, there'll be nobody to help us, but ourselves and our deeds and our actions. And we ask Allah to give us success on that day. 
And so these days, brothers and sisters, are so, so important. So much so that Allah Azza wa Jal, He swears by these days in Surah Al-Fajr, where Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, وَالْفَجْرِ وَلَيَالٍ عَشْرِ وَلَيَالٍ عَشْرِ this, These days are referring to the current days that we are in right now, which is the, the, uh, the days of the Hijjah. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Sahih of Al-Bukhari, He says that there are no days on which righteous deeds are more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than these 10 days. And unfortunately, many Muslims don't fail to recognize the significance of these days. Meaning that because it might, it's not Ramadan and there's no meaning, feeling of being you know, in that spiritual state, it's neglected by many Muslims, unfortunately, in today's day and age. But the, the benefits and the, the, the barakah in these days are immense. And so, just to share the significance, this is where Prophet Ibrahim السلام, made that ultimate sacrifice, right? Where you know, he had a dream that he was sacrificing his son, and many of you might already know the story. And he thought, you know, the first day after having that dream, one of the ways in which Allah Azza wa Jal He provides revelation to the prophets is through dreams. And so Ibrahim السلام, he thought it's just a dream. It's it's you know, I'm, I'm, it, it might it might not be a revelation from Allah. But then the second day it happened, and then Ibrahim السلام, started to get a little bit worried, right? Maybe this is a, a, a revelation that Allah Azza wa Jalla wants me to do this. And keep in mind, brothers and sisters, Ismail السلام, was a son that Allah Azza wa Jalla gave to Prophet Ibrahim السلام, in his old age, and this, and some you know reports say it was in his 80s, right? So, so imagine the love and the, the care that Ibrahim السلام, had for Ismail السلام. Many of us are fathers here. So you, you might know that even if it's a pinprick that harms our you know, children, the father wants to protect the child from them. So imagine having to make this ultimate sacrifice for the sake of Allah. And Ibrahim السلام, he was successful because after the third day he decided he talked to Ismail السلام, about the dream that he was having. And, and there's a reason why Allah جل, made both of these individuals prophets. Ibrahim السلام, followed by Ismail السلام, and his whole progeny. Because of the sacrifices that they were willing to make. Because what Ismail السلام, said to his father was, if Allah, and I'm paraphrasing, if Allah is telling you to do this, then you will find from among the patient, inshallah. So imagine this, this the wisdom that Ismail السلام, had at such a young age. You know, again, he was around, he was, he was a teenager at that time. And so the wisdom that Ismail السلام, had in that, in that moment made it a little bit easier for Ibrahim السلام. And in that moment, that is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replaced it with a ram or a sheep. And that is where that, that, that ritual that we do every year, uh, it comes into play. And so I wanted to highlight and focus on that because my brothers and sisters, we are not being asked to sacrifice our child. What is it? We have to look inside, and this is where introspection is so important. We have to look inside ourselves and see, what is my Ismail alayhi salam? What is it that's keeping me from the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jalla? For many of us, and I know for myself, it can be my phone. I, sometimes I might be on my phone and time for salah comes in and I'm, I'm just wasting my time. Right? From, so many of us, it might be, you know, having, you know, not having that true relationship and not showing that sort of al-ham with our family. Or it can be many things in our life that is preventing us from, um, from getting close to Allah Azza wa Jalla. And one of the, uh, um, in, in Fath al-Bari, one of the most apparent reasons for the 10 days of the Hijjah being so special is because if you think about it, this is where all the five pillars intersect, right? This is where the Tawheed, belief in Allah, Salah, Siyam, Zakat, and Hajj all come into play and they all mix within these 10 days. And so, so that is another reason why in no other period do all of the five pillars of Islam coalesce like we have it in these uh, 10 days of the Hijjah. And so now the question becomes, just as, I, as, we, as we conclude inshallah, what are some things that we can do? And there's so many things that we can do within these 10 days of the Hijjah. With number one being, and I want to, to focus on this, is to reaffirm our commitment to Tawheed. And ta'bud Allah wa la ushrika bihi shaykh. Because without that Tawheed of Allah, our actions will amount to nothing, right? Because Allah Azza wa Jalla He says, "Inna Allah la yafir in yushraka bi wa yafir ma duna dhalika li ma yishada." Allah can forgive any sin that we do, but He will not forgive shirk. And so, some of, sometimes when we think of the word shirk, we might think of you know 
For example, God has a son, right? Christians believe that. That is going to with Allah, whatever it's going to that is going against that. Or worshipping idols. But there are some minor forms in our, in our society amongst Muslims that we see that can amount to shit. For example, amulets. People wearing things around their arms, right, around their necks, and believing that if I wear this thing, it will protect me from X, Y, Z, or it will protect me from evil. Another common one that I see is um, lucky charms or rabbit's foot or these kind of things that we put our belief in X, Y, Z in something that it will, for example, if I take this to my exam, I will succeed, or if I take this to my job interview, I'll get the job. So, in fact, we are putting our trust in something besides Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So these are all minor forms of shirk that sometimes might not come to mind immediately, but are things that can nullify our deeds potentially. And so that's why it is so, so, so important, brothers and sisters. If there was one thing, because the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Man qala la ilaha illallah al jannah. Whoever says la ilaha illallah is going to jannah. And in another hadith, in which the Prophet ﷺ was explaining to one of his companions that if you worship Allah without partners, that is, it. he gave glad tidings for that. And so then the companion said, Ya Rasulullah, can I go to, to the people and give them this glad tiding? And the Prophet ﷺ said, No, don't do that because people can abuse that. Right? Because, because people can take advantage of that and run with it. I believe in Allah, I'm going to tell them. No. So, so, so important to keep this in mind because that is the number one thing. It doesn't matter if a person has a lifetime worth of worship. If a person does not have that concept of tawheed, if the person doesn't have that concept of an Allah wa la bi shay'a, his deeds can be nullified. And so we ask Allah to protect us from that. Number two, obey the Prophet وسلم, and stay away from the prohibitions that he has placed upon us. قُلْ أَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُ الرَّسُولُ Right? We find a lot of people saying, I believe in Allah. But Allah says, if you say, if you believe in me, then believe in my messenger. And so what does it mean to believe in the messenger of Allah? Is to follow in his footsteps. A lot of times we see, um, you know, nowadays there's so many, especially from, I come from a South Asian culture, there's a lot of bid'ahs that are associated with uh, with our, with our culture. And so just to be careful and to follow only the authentic sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And then lastly, brothers and sisters, um, if you have wronged someone, then clear your name and make up with those who you have wronged. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, there is no veil between the oppressed and Allah Azza wa Jalla. Even if it's a kafir, imagine that brothers and sisters. If you oppress someone, that right is going to be given back one way or another. Because Allah Azza wa Jalla, he is, he is the most just, right? So he will, so so and and Allah Azza wa Jalla will take us into account if we oppress one another. And so on the day of judgment, it's not just human beings, even the animals. So for example, if one animal wronged another with his horns, then Allah Azza wa Jalla will give the right back on the day of judgment before the animals perish. And so imagine if Allah Azza wa Jalla will go to that length to give animals their rights. What about us? Right, so that cousin or that uncle or that family member that we haven't talked to over for so many years over something that might be trivial, right? Make up with that person. Make up. Be be the person who will go towards the towards the other person and try to rectify and reconcile. Because the Prophet ﷺ, he said he promised a house in Jannah for those who will avoid arguments and those who will make up with their with their brother or their sister, even if the person is right. So even if I believe I'm right, you go and you make up with that person. For the sake of Allah. And, and lastly, it's not just for forgiveness. If you've taken away the rights of someone, for example, if you owe someone money and you are deliberately not giving them back their right, then you better get it done in this dunya before Allah Azza will take you into account on the day of Qiyamah. And so there's a lot that can be said about this, about the about this topic. But just firstly, an advice for myself and for for for, for the brothers and sisters here is to try to Stay away from those sins that the Prophet ﷺ and, and that the Prophet ﷺ commanded us to stay away from, and to increase whatever it is. So this is where again every single individual is unique. We all have our um, we all have our strengths and weaknesses. We all have things that Allah Azza has given us the ability to do. So if, for example, I'm, I have I haven't touched the Quran since Ramadan, then maybe it might be time to start opening it and reading. And if I if I have been keeping up with you know, reciting Quran and I've been doing, say, let's say I've been reading one page, maybe try to increase it to two pages. Basically, try to make these 10 days special such that at the end, inshallah, and when we celebrate, what do we celebrate? We celebrate all these actions. Just like in Ramadan, when Eid al-Fitr comes, we've been celebrating, inshallah, uh, the forgiveness from Allah, we've been celebrating all the hard work that we've done. 
just like that for this Eid al-Adha, inshaAllah, so that we can celebrate all the actions that we have put forth in these 10 days. And it's just 10 days, brothers and sisters. It's going to fly by in a flash. And so take advantage of it because we don't know if next year Allah will give us the chance to be in the, in the, in the best 10 days of the year. We ask Allah to make us from among those who take heed of the advices that we learn. We ask Allah Azza wa to make it easy for our brothers and sisters in Gaza. We ask Allah Azza wa to make these 10 days the best 10 days that we have. That we ask Allah to make these 10 days the best that we, from, from our from our life up to this point, inshallah, so that we can take advantage and so that we can uh, gain the benefit of these 10 days. Allahumma fil lil mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat al ahya'u minhum wal amwat inna ka ya maulana sami'un qareefun bajibu da'awat ibad Allah inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-nabi ya ayuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim ubarik ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad kama baratta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim fil alameen inna ka hamidu majid ibad Allah rahimakum Allah ittaku Allah inna Allah ya'muru bil abdi wal ihsan وإنتهى الكربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وقوموا إلى صلاة